Well, with that short introduction of the speakers of this morning, I should like to first ask Mr. Steve Koonin to take the floor and please. Thank you. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here to help with the inauguration of uh, DIFFER. Uh, it's my first time on this site and first exposure to what has gone on here and what will go on here. And I have to say I felt immediately at home with the 60s classic rock uh, playing on the speakers before we got started. To prepare my remarks, I spent some time reading the strategic plan. And first, uh, I find it a remarkable document, and my congratulations to everyone who was involved in its preparation. The thought and care that went in to preparing this transition for the Institute are evident, and the thinking behind it reads to me as something very sound. As far as the topics that DIFFER will study, there are, of course, many areas of basic energy research that could be pursued. But given the expertise already in hand and the opportunities to make progress, solar fuels by non-biological means and plasma physics are well chosen. And as the plan taught me, these are very likely to have novel synergies between them. The solar fuels work on turning light, heat, and electrical energy into chemical bond energy, which has the highest energy density uh, of ways of storing energy, is particularly important and is largely an unsolved problem in the ways that DIFFER is hoping to pursue it. The plasma work focuses on, among other topics, plasma surface interactions which is one of the most difficult and significant research areas in the quest for fusion energy. As we had a discussion uh, last night, there are some other areas such as tritium breeding and the integration of the whole system in a plasma power source that are equally challenging. But certainly plasma surface interactions is one of the most important. And as the strategic plan notes, there are likely novel synergies between what a plasma does to its surface and what you might be able to use that surface for in terms of catalysis. Both the fuels and plasma work address two very important aspects of the world's energy challenges. Fuels dealing with security of supply in a green way, and also for storing energy from intermittent renewables. And fusion, of course, is the ultimate clean power source. Both of these require much basic science and then engineering if their potential is to be realized. But let me now turn for the rest of my remarks to something about energy research more broadly, as I've been involved with that subject for almost a decade now in various roles. We certainly have big problems in energy. Greenhouse gases from the fossil fuels that power 80% of the world's energy needs right now. The maldistribution of energy resources around the globe. And how will we provide for twice as much energy that the world is going to need by the middle of the century? The natural inclination of a scientist thinking about these problems is to say, I'll go out and invent the solution. Whether it's a more efficient photovoltaic material, or a better battery, or a cleaner biofuel, and so on. And no doubt, new technologies will be very important in reaching our energy goals but they in themselves will not be enough. Not only must we scientists invent things, but we also have to see them deployed. 
to measure our success not only in papers and patents and students, but also and more directly in terms of quads of energy saved or generated, barrels of oil displaced, or tons of carbon dioxide emission mitigated. And here, I think the world hasn't done particularly well because transforming our energy system is a daunting task, quite separate from inventing new technologies, and in my opinion, actually more difficult. Consider that producing, transmitting, storing, and using energy is one of the largest activities of society. About 7% of the U.S. economy is tied up in energy in one way or the other. The system of energy in the U.S., and I think here in Europe as well, is 95% in the hands of the private sector. It's operated, constructed by corporations in order to make a profit and to provide services required by consumers, both as individuals and as organizations. The facilities for energy are large, they're expensive, and they live a long time, 50 or more years. Further, fuels for vehicles and power, electricity, are commodities. The margins in that business are thin, and the system is naturally conservative when it comes to technology. And also, new technologies that get introduced need to operate with the existing system, whether it's fuels that need to operate with existing vehicles or renewables that need to plug into the existing grid. All of that means that not only do new technologies have to work, but they have to work better than the alternatives. And that means that words like clean energy revolution, Apollo project, moonshot, and so on, are not particularly apt metaphors for what we need to do in energy. It means that also, if we truly want to make material changes in the real energy system, we need to see that there is good coordination among the technology development, the policy, the economic, the political environments in which those technologies will be deployed. One, the technology, for example, doesn't necessarily drive the others, or the others drive the technology, but there is a bigger picture beyond what the scientists and engineers do that have to be considered. Can you make money from the technology? What is the best way in which to subsidize the early phases of deployment? Will consumers accept a new technology? And we have numerous examples, I know them best in the US, where we've gotten all of this wrong with embarrassing consequences. And so we have to, in really an almost unprecedented way, fuse the technology with the policy and the social sciences if we're not simply going to develop gadgets and have little impact on the actual energy system. This is not an easy thing for working scientists to appreciate. And of course, most working scientists are rightly focused on the technology work. But as you all think about DIFFER and energy research, I'd urge you to respect those other societal aspects. How does the technology play to business? Can you make money? What government regulations are required to either accelerate deployment or might they inhibit deployment? And again, how will consumers react to new technologies? If the energy problems are truly as important as we say they are, we cannot afford not to pay attention to those other matters. So in the past few minutes, I focused more on the applied aspects of energy research because, in my opinion, they're often neglected and they are, I think, the most problematic. But for those of you who are not scientists, it's worth also remembering that basic research 
curiosity-driven science is also an essential part of the scientific enterprise and so must be part of the research portfolio. I was quite excited, I expect many of you were, to read about the uh, work on Myrons that was recently in the press. I don't know what that's good for yet. I'm not sure anybody does. But it's pretty interesting, and my expectation is it will have a technical impact over the next couple decades. So even as you focus on these more applied things, do remember to make room for some of that wonderful curiosity, seemingly useless research that basic scientists do. With that, again, my congratulations to those of you who are involved in this inauguration of DIFFER, and I look forward to hearing about its research progress in the coming years. Thank you very much. <laughs>